All right, so everybody's been making a big deal about the nodal axis and the fact that it is moving now from Taurus Scorpio to Aries and, and Libra. The big deal about the nodal axis, as I'm going to show you, is that it's a point of manifestation. And it's a combining of the solar principle of self-actualization, right, with the lunar principle and of embodiment the lunar principle is what we use to sense out our environment and as you're going to see to ferret out our values and the solar principle is really what we're focused and aiming to bring forth into the world uh, i guess at our core but this kind of is altered by the makeup of who we are completely so if i could just share my screen with you and I'm going to explain what the nodal axis is, what it's going to do, and all of those good things. Okay, so recently, as you see, the nodal axis, which is the north node here, but the reason we say axis is because over here at 29 Libra, we have the south node and you can forgive the terrible drawings now I picked a random example guy's chart because I wanted him to be born in Aries so that I could show you the natal the nodal axis going over his natal planets and how that might trigger something important in his life now, when we're dealing with the nodal axis, what we're dealing with is a, a junction point, right, between the solar principle of the sun. Okay, let's erase that really quick. So this stretching here to this, we're dealing with the lunar principle and the solar principle coming together in a single point. So as you can see in this chart, if the person was born in 1993, the north node was in the sign of Sagittarius. Okay, the, the masculine part of ourselves and the feminine part of ourselves. Now, the moon, which represents our emotions, our feelings, and the sun, which represents our consciousness. Our spirit, the heart of our chart, right? Now the nodal axis here would give this person the best opportunity to actualize the Aryan and the Leonian energies, the Aryan sun and the Leonian moon. And how they might do that is by combining both those energies into the third point of Sagittarius. From there, an alchemy sort of takes place and ma it materializes both of these energies into a reconciled point, sort of like the part of fortune does. Where it combines moon, sun, and ascendant into a point where you can experience and receive joy in your life. The moon and the sun combine at the nodal axis as a, a mission center. That's why it's like called the spiritual mission, because you're aiming from the past life orientation, let's say, of the south node in Gemini to the future orientation of the north node. Now you're carrying with you all the skills and abilities you built up in a prior existence. You know, I don't necessarily look at this as faded as other astrologers do, where, you know, they believe you might have to atone for something, or you might have to correct, or you've already developed these skills and you're orienting towards. Either way, it's very apparent that you carry with you a strong emphasis of the South Node, which means you clearly have developed that. Through observation, we can see that. And you're orienting yourself towards that. So if it's not your chart, right 
because your chart isn't like this unless you were born on April 3rd, 1993, then your, where you were born in the 18-year cycle of the nodal axis might be different. Now, everybody might be in the same sign, but only this guy was born with the North Node in the 8th house, and that makes it very unique. So he may feel the house of Scorpio more than he feels the North Node at this point. We have to start to figure out what's going on here. So we have to deal with polarities. We have to deal with Libra, the sign of partnership. And we have to deal with Aries, the sign of the self, the individual. There's a reason that I chose this chart. And the reason is because Aries is on the first house cusp at the start of the zodiac, where it normally would be as the first sign. Now, the north node has gone into the first sign. It goes backwards through the sky. It takes about 18 years, 18 to 19 years for it to move all the way backwards, as you'll see. If we go from 2023 to 2042. There it is, right about the same spot, right? 22 degrees Aries. So let's go back to 2023. So that's where we are today. Just so you know, everything on the outer wheel is where the planets are today, right now. And everything on the inner wheel is the person's birth chart, who we would be looking at right now. Now, we would expect significant things to happen to this person because they're in Aries when the conjunction of the North Node or the conjunction of the South Node reaches these critical degrees. So Jupiter and Libra, when the South Node reaches that, we would expect manifestations to happen and occur between the two houses. In this case, the 6th and 12th will be in play because... The North Node will be in the 12th house and the 6th house, so their inner self, 12th house, their hidden self, and their 6th house, their body, and their habits, and their routines, their day-to-day -day work. We would expect significant things to happen. Now, if the South Node hits Jupiter, we might expect that expansion comes via a blast from the past through the use of old skill sets, through the understanding and awareness of that, through the integration of or development of a philosophy from, you know, skills that we once had, South Node, right? When the North Node begins to go over the natal planets, as we'll see here, let's go months into the future. When the nodal axis gets to here, it's now conjunct these planets. And it will also be conjunct Jupiter, which is opposed to them natally. Meaning that there's the nodal axis is lighting up all of these planets and putting emphasis on the opposition itself. So the pull between partnership it, for this person and the individual self, the existence of the self, need to be worked on here. The manifestations would be in line with the person's desire to both follow their own impulses, Aries, remain true to their own routines and their own state of inner harmony while combining and synergizing with a partner who amplifies that and supports that and tunes into that, whom they can support and who can buy into their ideas and they can achieve together without this, the sacrifice which is a word i don't believe in right like we shouldn't be sacrificing we're paying a price if we value the partnership then we take actions in line with what gets us and keeps us the partnership okay which i'm going to explain just a little bit so everybody wants to know why it's so important that the north node now has entered aries well aries is where we aries is where we seek to liberate ourselves and other people Aries key is I am, the sort of key phrase, right? Taurus is I have, 
So the first house is the individual. The second house is I have, but you have what, okay? You are what, okay? I am, meaning I exist. So important. Well, not only do you exist, but you're also aware that you exist, okay? The sun representing consciousness with the projecting arrow, which is Mars, which is the ruler of Aries, okay, has a key word of activity. And the writing's bad, but you're, you're picking up what I'm laying down. Now, activity, what action towards what? Action towards what we have. What do we have? We have values. So the good thing about Aries is we know that we are and we're conscious of that. So consciousness exists and so do we because we're aware that we exist, right? Now, that that's a beautiful thing. But we exist and we have to value what? Well, above all, we have to value our existence. Let's make this a little bit cleaner. Above all, we have to value our existence. Say, Jay, why, if the sun's the most important planet, why doesn't why don't we just start in Leo in the fifth house? Well, Leo's a fixed sign, not a cardinal sign. And this is where we actualize what we define. So here's our inner self from houses one through four, the fourth house being our personal life, our deepest, uh, our deepest roots and who we are um, on the inner landscape. Up until that point, we're going through subjective houses, meaning we're defining what is ours. This is me, and this is mine, and this is what I think, and here's what I feel, and now I'm going to take all of this and actualize it. So here's what we do. This is all very important because... You can't just go looking at the nodal axis and say, oh, well, the nodal axis is going into Aries. Like, it's not your node. The nodal axis is a, a point of focus, an alchemical point where two masculine and feminine energies, two very important energies, right? The solar and the lunar principle of Cancer and the solar principle of Leo, the sun, and the moon of can ruling Cancer come together emerge for expression it gives us a focal point for that expression because we got two different signs and sometimes they're not very compatible and we need to actualize the principles and how we can best do that is through that mode now here's what happens aries the sun with the thing mars okay sun is over here by itself we are now realize that we exist and we now have to define what we value. That's Taurus. And that's ruled by Venus, okay? Venus is right here. Now, Venus is an attractive force. It attracts what we value to us, and that's very important. All of a sudden, when we define our values, values are what we would act to gain and keep. We would act to gain and to keep okay we're acting to gain and keep our values so we're a person we exist our existence is now the highest value we are acting to gain and keep thinking gemini thinking is man's or a person's only means of survival thinking is our only means of survival we have to use our heads like, I shouldn't touch a hot stove. Well, how do you know, right? Well, it feels hot. What is this on the top of Mercury's head? Venus doesn't have this. Venus defines our values, what's important to us. It's our resources. It's what we're going to act towards, right? Mars has to act towards something. We, as an individual, have to act towards something. We act towards our value, which is the maintenance of our existence. But not only that, but we also want to experience pleasure. We want to 
you know, go after other things that we value, right? Like we exist, but we also want other things. We want food. We want housing. We want beauty. We want art. We want music. We want to be something. We want to share something. We want to get something from somebody else. Okay. So there we are. So the key word for Mars is action. And we're going to act to gain and keep our values. And then we think to go about this process. We collect information. We collect info and then we communicate what we know to other people to engage this process. Now, we're this is just data collection here. We're coming, we're using books, we're using school, we're using other people, we're using relationships. Our siblings are teaching us, our parents, other things in the, especially early on in the inner life. Venus is just a definition of the values, but it doesn't have this lunar crescent on the top, does it? It just has the solar principle and it has the cross of matter. When we get to Mercury, as you can see here, the difference is it adds in the lunar crescent before we even get to the lunar principle by itself, which means what? It means that when we're exposed to information, when we think we have feelings, those feelings are to tell us where we're at in relation to what? Our values. It might tell us where we're at in relation to our existence. Are we hungry? Well, now we feel hungry and we need to eat and we're upset. And so when we feel that, we have to take action, Mars, to maintain our existence. We're meaning when we're young, we have to cry and try to get milk somehow, right? We have to like do something about this pain that we feel, which is if I don't eat, I'm not going to survive. Okay. And, and we know that we're acting towards our value. Our emotions are helping us act towards our value because the feeling itself is always in relation to what we value. And this tool getting information is there to help us achieve that value. I want to be an electrician, so I go to school and I act to gain and keep that and I get information and the information that doesn't align with those values, I don't feel good when I do them. Like when I go out and hang out with my friends for you know 20 days in a row and I didn't do my electrician stuff and now I'm not an electrician. There's pain that comes with that. That's felt emotionally. Moon. So the moon at the top of this planet is telling you something. The information that we get needs to be processed through the emotional centers. And that those sensations are what we're using to, to say, here's what we want to be in the world and here's what we don't want to be. To define who we are. So we've defined ourselves through the first four phases. We figured out we are a person, we exist, and we have values, things that we want and we need. And we've also defined that we think in order to survive. And then when we, and we get information and we communicate to others and our emotions respond to where we are at in relation to our values. Now, if our perception is off, our thinking is off, we may have a bad emotion, but we may not be off path. Now, that's something I had to clarify. I had a great conversation with a friend of mine. She helped me realize it was, uh, I needed to remind people that if their perception is off, then their emotions are going to think that. So if you think you're not going to get, like, let's say you're, you're a baby and your mom's walking in with the bottle, right? horrible bottle right but there it is you know the bottle's right there and she's walking in with it and instead of you seeing that the bottle is there you just remember 10 hours ago when you cried for two hours and nothing happened and so the information that you have you base your feeling on what already happened what happened was you didn't cry enough you didn't get fed so now Let's just say that that's the most elementary way, right? Your emotions are telling you something that's false. You're about to be fed right now, and yet you're still working yourself up. 
So your perception's off. But obviously you're a baby and you can't reason or or rationalize. And you're doing what you think is is best. But your emotions are just concerned with the value. They're not demons. They're not to be... When you act against your value system, you're acting anti-emotionally, not emotionally. So you say, I didn't get what I want, but it's like, yeah, but you knew five weeks before you didn't feel good about the choices you were making. And you didn't make a change then because you didn't want to stir the waters or create a conflict or do something else. But your emotions were telling you you were uncomfortable and that what you needed to do was, you know, create a conflict. Now, we've defined ourselves here. We define how we feel about it. Okay, we got a good feeling. We're on path. We got good information. We got good values. We know we exist and we value our existence and we're not going to sacrifice that for anything. And now we're going to go actualize ourselves and begin to give form to that existence. That's the sol solar principle. The point here is, this is very important because if you don't really understand this. This solar lunar principle. This actualization of the self. And of the soul. The need to embody sun, I mean, the need to embody moon, the solar principle sun, out in the world, node. So when, if you have any connections to the transiting lunar axis, you're going to be playing around now for the time that the North Node is in Aries with the principles of individualist, I mean individuality, with partnership. You know, and I can explain a lot, lot more on that, but that's where I'll leave the video for now. It's like, you're going to be learning about who you are and you're going to be trying to create a partnership that supports that. And you're going to realize that if the partnership is not supportive, you're going to have to shed the partnership or get into a new partnership that is. And this can only come when we first define a sense of inner harmony, which can only come from defining routines, which are in line with our values, et cetera, et cetera. And the partnership needs to be a place that acts as a, a vessel for overcoming the limitations of the self. It's like an economy. You're coming together to do business with somebody else who has things you don't have, who has skills you don't have, who wants to achieve values that you both do. Like I make tires and you make cars, and if you make cars and I get to sell you tires. And then we both get to sell the cars and then you get to sell the cars and with the tires and we both win. Sort of something like that, right? Like where uh, you're not concerned with making and shaping rubber and I'm not concerned with making and shaping metal. And so if we combine our forces, we can create one quality product and we both win. But we need each other for that. But we're not going to give up our identities to do it either. Like if I stop making tires, now you have to make them. And now we're not in a good partnership. So, and we, and we need to listen to things like that. When somebody draws a deficit, we're not in a good space. And, and those are going to be the concerns right now of Aries and, and Libra. And, you know, dependency issues will come up. And the crystallization and the manifestations that will happen and the relationships that will be brought into your life may feel a bit more, a lot more personal, a lot more faded at this point because they're hitting at the core of who you are and what you want to embody and where you want to go and especially how you want to liberate yourself and how you want to enter into a healthy state of partnership um, that allows for the expression of that self and supports it. Remember, your existence is your primary value. I am. I exist. That's the primary value. If you sacrifice that existence to be in a partnership that doesn't support it, or who you want to be, who you want to actualize, then you're going to be off path and the events and things will likely be in the nature of that, but in the areas 
of your chart where the houses are indicating. So it could be events related to your career or your goals and your social circles or your inner psyche or your partnerships, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so that is a lot about what's going on with the node. It's not necessarily just going to affect you today, especially if you don't have any planets at 29 degrees or close to within a couple of degrees of that. And the conjunctions are probably going to be the most potent and deeply felt of this whole process. And so you have to pay attention for if you have planets in Libra, if you have planets in Aries. And then know that there's going to be that relationship. And if you want more help, then reach out to me. And we'll figure that we'll figure things out in your chart personally on a more individual basis. So this is why, you know, I'm just making this video using an example chart so that you can see that the importance here is that it's based on you as an individual. And yes, we're all experiencing the North Node going through Aries, but who knows when or if or how you will experience the transiting nodal axis. And obviously what's more important is your nodal axis as it is now and the transits to and from there by planets. Like let's say Jupiter was transiting your nodal axis and opening up an expansive phase of your life towards your spiritual missions orientation using the backdrop of your past life gifts. Or maybe the nodal axis transits your actual planets here and then opens up the experience that way, but reverse through the actual planets in your chart. So that is that. And I will talk to you soon.